So this uh, Tuesday, quick video showing you how to, the best way to sharpen a chainsaw. And we've got some new arrivals, haven't we? Yes, we have. Some surprise new arrivals. You probably guessed what they are anyway. But, um, <laughs> yeah, stick around and see. Hello everyone and here we go. This is how to sharpen a chainsaw. Simple demonstration just using a hand file and simple things. I did make for this demonstration uh, a G-crump and I've welded a, uh, a string line pin to it as you can see uh, just so I can hammer this in the tree somewhere to hold the saw. So then you can put the saw in there, do the G-cramp up, and then that's all firm, and we can actually just a little bit tighter. There. So, uh, basics. We'll, we'll start with, I'll take the, because the chain's slack, way too slack, yeah? So we'll start with that, I'll show you how to, how to tighten the chain, etc, etc. So I'll leave it in the vise, and I'll just show you basically how we tighten the, uh, tighten the chain, but before that, I'll show you some, this on this particular model of the still MS251, yeah? So the chain is driven by this cog that comes off the engine, yeah, as you can see. So these little teeth on the bottom of it are driven by this cog here, yeah? Then they run along this thing, which is called a bar, and then... Uh, and yeah, the bar guides the chain around. Simple as that. So what we're going to do is remove the chainsaw <laughs> from the bar because it's all. So just a bit of basic maintenance before we start. As you see here, every chainsaw has these little holes. See these little holes here. And there's one on the other side, yeah? Here. While you've got the bar off the chain, uh, get something thin, like, like a pen knife or whatever, that fits in this slot. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of, uh... there's old oily sawdust in there as well, which you know could clog things up. So you need to do that both sides of the bar. Do it back this way, away from this roller on the front, yeah, because you don't want to add more mess to that, basically. So yeah, clean this out, and then um, so make sure your holes in the end are these little holes here are free from any debris, etc. So on all petrol chainsaws, you will have this here is the uh, oil outlet. This pumps oil into that little hole on the bar, yeah? Which then feeds, then the chain takes the oil around and lubricates itself as it's going around the bar. So you need to make sure this hole here is clean and this this channel here is clean, yeah? Best way to do that is have a brush and just... There we go. So a nice clean hole. Yeah, and now we're going to assemble that onto the chain, onto the bar. So the, the chain fits on the bar, like so. It's a bit weird doing it this way around, but... So if I screw this clockwise, it pushes the pin backwards, which tightens the chain. Yeah, I'll put this back on. Oh. Before you put this back on, you want to make sure all this is clean as well. So this is just like standard sawdust and oil that happens; it all clogs up with use. So periodically, you'd need to clean this out. That goes on there. 
the nut goes on there So what you want to do is tighten the chain until, see I can pull that up and I can expose the bottom of the teeth, yeah? So that needs a bit more adjustment, that needs to be a bit tighter than that. Hang on. So you need to slacken this nut so you've got, yeah, a little bit more. So you want to do it so you can just pull the teeth clear of the bar and then that gives it, but there's a bit that, of that's tight enough, still, so yeah. yeah. There, just clear the bar there. Oh. Okay, so we'll do that up. Okay, so chains uh, generally are the, the, generally there are different types of chain. It's just a different type of profile. Basically, all a chain is there's a chisel either side of this chain. Yeah. And that chisel cuts out a strip of wood. Yeah, this chain has a very sharp corner on it, like a like a point. Yeah, so it's a very very sharp uh, edged chisels. Yeah, this chain, however, has a rounded edge. It's more robust, more of a hard wearing type of type of chain. Yeah, so this this edge here won't wear as quickly because it's a rounded edge. So, like I said, it's a bit more robust. So that's the tooth you need to sharpen. This is what they call a raker tooth. All this does is that you, as you wear this down, you need to file this down with a flat file. Yeah, because uh, this, this adjusts the depth of cut. So if you want it to bite, if it's not biting in very well, you need to take this piece down, file this down a bit, yeah. So it's lower than the edge of the tooth. If I put, if you see from this angle, if I put um, this file across the top, I don't know if you can see the gap here. Yeah, but see there's a slight gap. Uh, can I point with something? So there's a slight gap between the raker and the edge of the tooth. Yeah, see this little gap here? I don't know if you can see it. I'll put my um, pen knife through there. See, see this gap? So that gap determines how much the tooth bites in. If there is no gap, it won't bite at all because the raker will be hitting the wood before the actual chisel tooth, yeah? So you need to keep these rakers slightly below that edge. And um, there's lots of fancy, there's lots of fancy devices and stuff to do that. But what I find the easiest way to do it, and keep it simple, yeah? If when you're cutting with a sharp saw and it's not pulling very much, it's not digging in, you need to take the rakers down just three strokes with a file on every tooth every yeah. raker every raker tooth mm. Put the break on. and then uh, just to make sure that that piece is lower than the tip of this yeah okay so, okay so these are the teeth we need to sharpen the big ones and if you look nearly nowadays nearly on every chain chainsaw chain there is a line at the back of the tooth see this line here right on nearly every chainsaw tooth I don't know if you can see this very faint line on the back of the tooth here yeah it's on the back of this one I'll we'll clean this off on the back of this one yeah so I don't know if you can see these lines that are on the back that's the angle that your file needs to be at yeah so if I file this I need to that my file needs to be running at the same angle as that line yeah and it needs to be going slightly uphill so from where I am it needs to be going slightly uphill not very much just slightly but what you're trying to do is sharpen this top edge of the chisel and this side edge as well at the same time so just there it's a little sharp yeah but you need to make sure you do then push it back and do the next tooth Do every tooth.
the same amount of strokes. And you can see we've already done this too. That's where we started. Then you need to go the other side and do the same this way. Just clean that one off so it's easier to recognise. So again, three strokes. Same as on the other side. Speed things up a bit now, is it normal speed, what I would do it at. Oh. See that's what happens when you're rushing. <laughs> rushing. where I started. So now these teeth are all sharp. Um, in fact very sharp. I don't know how I can um, demonstrate how sharp they are. This here's a piece of bark. Look. Yeah so the, the edges of these teeth now should be extremely sharp yeah as you can see. Okay so uh, just basics you have two filler caps on the on a petrol chainsaw petrol motor chainsaw. This one on the front, usually on the front, uh, is for oil. This is proper chain oil because it's sticky and it sticks to the surfaces and lubricates the chain and doesn't all fly off everywhere. And on the back you'll have a petrol cap filled with the recommended mix of petrol and oil for a two-stroke engine needs oil in the petrol but we have chainsaw inspector and, and, here and as the chainsaw well. inspector <laughs> needs oil in the petrol to lubricate the piston, to lubricate the engine basically. Okay, so starting the saw. Uh, basically, the, the, uh, a lot of people um, who are used to using saws will just start them like this, yeah, throw the saw away and pull the cord. Uh, but the proper way of doing it is actually stand on this. You see, this, these uh, saws have a wider piece here. So you can put your foot on, yeah, and then you put the, according to your manufactured saw, according to the saw, you put your choke on, yeah, and then you just pull until it fires. As soon as it fires, turn it on to uh, however your, whatever guidelines the manufacturer tells you how to start your saw. This one has a choke and then it has a half choke, yeah. So as it's fired, As you can see, what happens is when you do a cut, these things, yeah, the on the bottom of the blade, they're running this way, yeah, pulling towards you. So they're taking a, this a chisel cut. Each one takes a chisel cut out of either side. So you end up with a uh, a cut as wide as the blade is, 
as, as the widest two of these teeth yeah and it just clears itself as it goes simple stuff so obviously a chainsaw is the most dangerous handheld tool you could ever use in your life not to be taken lightly um, they they kill more they're, they're just lethal yeah in the wrong hands or even in the right hands sometimes people get it wrong make mistakes get complacent they're really really dangerous pieces of kit yeah so a few things tips on safety once you say you've failed your tree you've you've read how to do that properly I'm not going to demonstrate it because there are so many ways I'm not going to demonstrate because I should be wearing safety trousers yeah and boots ear protection and something to cover my face from the flying sawdust yeah because uh, all those can be a distraction you can you can uh, slip you know with, with these you can slip and cut your leg uh, and it isn't a fact of just cutting the skin these will cut your leg off so uh, yeah they, they, they cause pretty horrific injuries um, so again we need to be careful with them so my advice would be when you've got a tree fell down and you're cutting the branches off yeah stand the opposite side of your of the tree from where you're cutting yeah so if you're cutting here you need to be cutting with the top part of the blade yeah to cut these tr these chunks off because if it kicks back it's going to kick it back and away from you or downwards yeah so anything on this side of the tree ideally you want to be cutting it with the top of the blade so if it does kick back suddenly it kicks backwards and downwards away from you or towards the, the floor yeah again this side if you're cutting with the top of the blade and it kicks back it's going to kick back towards you yeah so give yourself you know make sure the ground you stood on is clear etc give yourself a nice stance and cut from the top so if it kicks back it's away from you or if it pulls it's going to pull into the ground away from you yeah make sure you know be aware of where the chainsaw is don't be standing here like this and cut in towards you like this or underneath like this if it kicks back you're going to cut yourself yeah we cut in here and then as you cut in this side you need to step back a bit and give yourself room between the saw and yourself yeah so just uh, just to reiterate I use a chainsaw a lot on this farm uh, we've got a lot of trees we need to cut down the pines especially um, they're very very dangerous pieces of kit but I've had a lot of experience yeah if you're not experienced uh, you know you there's still no reason why you can still go and buy a chainsaw from anyone anyone can buy them yeah um, just remember they're very dangerous and you need to you need to treat them with respect because uh, yeah they they are a bit like fire they're a very good servant but not a very good master <laughs> treat these chainsaw treat a chainsaw with respect it's dangerous uh, piece of equipment yeah like I said the most dangerous handheld tool you could ever use um, I'd suggest if you're gonna buy one you need one to cut up logs get someone who knows what they're doing to show you how to use it or go on a proper course uh, and you know professionals uh, can demonstrate how to use the chainsaw safely etc um, yeah but the best advice I could give you get some training before you use it because they can be really dangerous so, look who we find, we're at the, the uh, Alpha Junior Bio Eco Market and it's full of YouTubers. Don't get away from us, can you? <laughs> and a busy day today and we're here because Andrew is doing a demonstration and I'll show you in a minute. So here she is at the Bio Eco Market in Alpha Junior, and today's a special day of plants and seed day. There are lots of other stores selling jewellery and uh, you name it, it's here, yeah? yeah. But Anne's just here today doing a demonstration on her um, almost pots. almost famous pa paper pots. <laughs> so, a quick demo of how quick to do one. and then I can do it in public. Yeah. Right. Um, brown paper or, and this is banqueting paper, so this is something that's just a plain... For like tabletops, yeah, you know, if you're having a banquet, well, obviously. Thank you, Mr. Saunders. Uh, it's always a healthy one. 
I've got one of these little paper pot makers, but I'm also going to show how you can do that with anything you may have at home, including a rolling pin. So this is all quite a good, you don't have to buy one of these, I've seen these on Amazon for about 20 odd pounds. Wow, really? Ridiculous, so get your lathe going into the saunders. So I'll do this very quickly. So I'm just cutting like so. Take one special little paper pot maker, roll like so. You need to make sure you have an area at the end that's not completely done. Hold them over, little magic twist. But oh, show us for that one, show us for that one. To do it with things you may have lying around the house. This is a 32 mil drain. Yeah, 40. 40 mil. Mm -hmm. So, same principle. Roll the bit over, make sure you've got a nice overlap. And with this one, we use this to just squash it flat. And there you go. Nice and simple. So here we are, we've just had a delivery, haven't we Ange? Mm. And we've just made a temporary little pen here, which is right beside these two fine, fine specimens. Fine specimen. Yeah. And the reason the delivery we've had is these two little sweeties. So let me officially introduce you to Ham Solo Luke Skyporker. Yeah, we changed it from Swine Walker because we already got Cindy Swine. So we now have Luke Sky Porker and Ham Solo. And Ham Solo because he was the single male in the litter. He was the only male in the litter. Yeah, so yeah. he was a solo male. So. Right, guys, try it outside. Come on. Yeah. yeah so um, Ham is the one with the Piri Piris, as you can see, one different coloured. And he's a whole male, so he's our boar pig, unrelated to someone. And then the other one, Luke, is uh, has been castrated, so he's not going to cause anyone any trouble, but he will be the best mate to well, Wilbur, to everybody. to everybody, but the best mate to Wilbur when Cindy's all grumpy having kids. <laughs> Piglets. Piglets. Goats have kids. Kids, yes, I know. Give him a Right, so... And I'll back out and show you what we've got here. But look at these cuties. Let's see if we can get them out with this. There you go. Put it actually there so it's near. So we thought it'd be good if they could they could sort of touch nose to nose, but because this has got chicken wire on as well, they can't really uh, be eaten. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, Andrew just pointed something out. Um, yeah, I better rectify that if you want to wait here. Uh, <laughs> the underside of their house, they can just squeeze through. Yeah, not so clever. I'll um, I'll sort that out right now. <laughs> well done. Well spotted. Yeah. So there we go, these two wait impatiently for their tea. Uh, and these two are having theirs. And they're eating lots of grass. So I'll just back back a bit and show you the area. So for the first couple of days, first days without mummy and all that stuff, 
we've given them a little patch here yeah nice big house for them to stay in um, plenty of food I'm gonna get some water for them in a minute but plenty of food and water obviously but uh, once they've become accustomed to us and to the fact that they're not with mummy anymore we'll take this away because then we have this electric fence right here yeah run by this baby and then once they get used to being in this area and once they've eaten all this grass and they're used to these guys next door we're going to put all four pigs up into that top paddock that I've been working on for the goats but there's a lot of food up there that the goats won't eat the go there's a, like a um, I'll show you in a minute but it's like a pea type stuff the pigs absolutely love it and the goats aren't too keen on it so what I thought all pigs up there first yeah let them eat all the lower level vegetation and then the goats can go in and eat all the all the other stuff that they like so much. So there, there we go. Ham Solo with the black patch on the back of his leg here and the two different colored piri piris under his chin. And uh, Luke Sky Porker. So I'm gonna feed you now guys, go and get your food. I'm Solo, Luke Skyporker. And just done these guys a huge breakfast. They've got boiled eggs and carrots and cabbage and celery, all sorts of stuff. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. Um, thanks for liking and subscribing. Oh, sorry. Thanks for liking, subscribing and ringing that little notification Ding -ding. bell. Well done, Biscuit, for ringing her bell then. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, don't forget, uh, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It costs you nothing and um, it should helps be... A, us. It helps us an awful We're lot. We're trying to get to 15,000. Yes, we are. Desperate. We're well, not desperate. Not We're just, just trying. It's always good to have a goal. Yes. Yes. Thanks, guys, and see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.